Hello everyone and welcome to Attachment Lesson 7, Cultural Variations in Attachment. This lesson follows on directly from the strange situation. And if you remember, Ainsworth discovered in her research that there were three different attachment types. Secure, insecure avoidant and insecure resistant. She also found that secure was the most common and resistant was the least common. And those differences were essentially put down to different parenting styles and techniques that the children were experiencing. So what this lesson is interested in is the fact that there are different child rearing styles and techniques across different cultures in the world and whether or not these differences affect the attachment types that are prevalent in those cultures. So the question is, do the proportions of securely and insecurely attached infants vary between cultures, or are they the same as the proportions that Ainsworth found in her original research? To help us answer that question, we're gonna have a look at a couple of studies. The first study, we're going to have a look at is an absolute key study for this topic and one that you cannot get away with not knowing. Okay, it's a study into cultural variations in attachment and it was conducted by Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg in 1988. So the aim of their study was very, very simple. They wanted to investigate cross-cultural variations in attachment. Now, this essentially means that they were interested in the proportions of secure, insecure avoidant and insecure resistant attachments across cultures. To do that, they used a meta-analysis. Now, for those of you who don't know what a meta-analysis is, it is a study that essentially takes results from a lot of other studies that have already been conducted and attempts to draw a general conclusion from all of the findings. So in this case, Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg took 32 studies that had been conducted in eight different countries, all of which had used the strange situation to measure attachment types. Overall, they included almost 2,000 infants in their results. And these were their findings. Now, before I put them up in written form, it's very popular to ask students to interpret or draw conclusions from graphs in an exam. So it'd be good just to have a quick look at the chart or the graph and see what jumps out at you. So for example, you should clearly see that secure attachment was the most common attachment type across the board. You may also notice that Germany had the highest level of insecure avoidant children um, and also their insecure avoidant was the second most common attachment type overall, with the exception of Israel and Japan, whose levels of insecure resistant were higher than their insecure avoidant, and China, whose levels of insecure resistant were pretty much equal to that of their insecure avoidant. OK, so they're just a couple of results that you could be asked to pick out of a chart if you ever got this in an exam. Now, these are the results written down now in case you need to make some notes. So they're just the ones that I kind of just mentioned with a few little extra bits. So secure attachment was the most common. Interestingly, Japan and Israel both had very high levels of insecure resistant and Japan and Israel are also what's known as collectivist cultures. Collectivist cultures are cultures that place a lot of importance on the welfare of the group rather than the welfare of the individual. OK, so there's a little bit of something there to kind of bear in mind. Um, something else that uh, they found was that the variation within cultures was 150% greater than the variation between cultures. So to give you an example of what I mean there, in America, there was a massive variation of securely attached infants. There was one study that found 90% of the infants were securely attached. 
However, there was another study also conducted in America that only found 46% of the in, of the infants were securely attached. So there's a huge variation within cultures as well. Okay, so that's another important finding just to bear in mind. Another piece of research conducted into cultural variations in attachment was carried out by Simonelli et al. in 2014. Now, Simonelli and her colleagues assessed 76 12-month-old babies using the strange situation. Now, the question that they were asking was, do the proportions of attachment styles still match those that were found in previous studies? And they found only 50% of the infants tested came out as secure, whereas 36% came out as avoidant, which is lower than what had been found in previous studies. And what they concluded was that the increasing number of avoidant children and the reduced number of securely attached children was due to the fact that more mothers now work longer hours and use professional childcare. So the change in attachment types prevalent in Italy in 2014 were put down to the fact that there was a change in society and a change in cultural norms in that mothers didn't just stay at home with the babies anymore. They actually went back to work and used professional childcare. So general conclusions that can be made from these two pieces of research. Number one. Secure attachment seems to be the norm across many cultures. That supports Bowlby's idea that attachment is innate and universal. It also supports the idea that secure attachment is the optimal attachment type for healthy development. Okay, so if you think about it in evolutionary terms, anything that's good and healthy and increases your chances of survival is going to become more and more and more common. So if secure attachment is the most common, then it stands to reason that it is also the healthiest form of attachment. Number two, cultural changes can make dramatic differences in the patterns of attachment. So that can be particularly seen in Simonelli's study where cultural and societal changes actively had an impact on the prevalence of certain attachment types. Okay. So that is the end of the outline. I hope that's all made sense. We'll now move on and have a look at a few evaluation points. A strength of Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg's study is that they had a very, very large sample. Okay, so there was almost 2,000 babies and their primary attachment figures that were included in their study. Now, that's a good thing because having large sample sizes increases the internal validity of a study. And that's because the large sample size reduces the impact of any anomalous results, which could be caused by bad methodology or just very, very unusual participants. OK, so it's a nice short strength for the research, but by no means a um, by no means a weak evaluation point still a nice one to use because particularly it is very very short and very sweet okay moving on a weakness of this research is that there are alternative explanations for the similarities between cultures okay so the research seems to suggest that the universal similarities in how attachments form is because of some kind of innate drive for survival. So that's kind of Bowlby's theory behind all of this. However, Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg suggest that at least some of the similarity that can be seen between cultures can be put down to the effects of mass media. So books and TV and more recently the internet. That's because these elements of mass media they spread ideas about ideal parenting techniques across the globe and so children all over the world are being exposed to similar influences because their parents are all being exposed to similar influences about how to best parent your children and what the best parenting techniques actually are so that suggests that the similarity between cultures could be down to our increasing global culture 
rather than down to innate biological influences. And then one final limitation is the issue of culture bias. So a lot of cross-cultural research suffers from what's known as imposed ethic. Now that means that the tools that are being used for that research are very often designed in one culture and then imposed on another. So for example, the strange situation was created by an American. It was based on a British theory. And so the strange situation is kind of based on the assumption of that researcher and on the assumptions of the culture in which it was created. So for example, the willingness to explore or gaining pleasure on reunion or allowing yourself to be comforted on reunion is a sign of secure attachment. However, in Germany, for example, a lack of separation anxiety and a lack of pleasure on reunion might be seen as independence and security by German standards rather than insecurity by American standards. So if you think of it that way, infants are not actually being measured by the standards of their own culture, which could lead to them being incorrectly categorized in the strange situation. That means that the strange situation may lack validity because it's not measuring what it's supposed to be measuring. Okay, that one is an important one. An imposed ethic is something that you will come across again when you move on to year two. Um, so I would really recommend that you kind of remember that one and use that one as much as you can because it is a very, very important point. And it is also a point that will pack a punch if used correctly. Okay. So the last thing to do then before we finish is just to have a look at a couple of exam questions. An interesting note at this point is that at the time of making this video, which is March 2020, this topic has never come up in an A-level exam. It's come up in an AS exam, but it hasn't come up in an A-level exam. So just be aware. Um, so a couple of exam questions that you could come across. You've got your standard outline A study um, that's looked into cultural variations of attachment. That should be fairly um, standard. You've also got um, little trick questions like outline what research has shown about cultural variations in attachment. So for questions like that, don't make the mistake of outlining a study. The question only wants you to talk about the findings and there'll be no marks for anything about procedures. OK, equally with question number one, it's an eight mark essay. So remember, if you're an A-level student, it's three marks for your outline and five marks for your evaluation. And if you're in it, if you're an AS student, it's four marks and four marks um, for that question in particular discuss findings of research. Again, don't trip up. It's not asking you for procedure and findings. Just outline the findings. OK, there will be no marks for anything on procedures. OK, these are just a couple of examples. Um, have a go at writing them um, and see how you get on. Obviously, you could also be given questions on uh, graph interpretation and multiple choice and that kind of thing as well. Um, so if you want to have another little look at how to interpret a graph, then skip back to um, earlier on in the video and have a little look at how we did that as well. And that is the end of the video. So I hope it's all made sense. And thank you very much for listening.